Muy buenos días. Por parte de la Universidad Autónoma de Chihuahua y la Facultad de Filosofía y Letras, les damos la más cordial bienvenida a todas y todos ustedes a la 43 tercera Semana del Humanismo, Ética y Educación como Herramientas contra la Brecha Social. Agradecemos la presencia de la comunidad de la Facultad de Filosofía y Letras de la UASH, además al público que nos sigue por nuestras redes sociales oficiales, por las cuales estamos transmitiendo en vivo esta Semana del Humanismo. Antes de iniciar con la presentación de nuestra conferencista, queremos solicitarle a que tengan preguntas, las compartan en el chat para ser leídas al finalizar la conferencia. Muchas gracias. Es así que este día nos da gusto recibir a la maestra Brenda González. La profesora Brenda Mesa es egresada de la Facultad de Filosofía y Letras. Ella ha laborado y colaborado con nosotros por 11 años continuos en la formación de nuestros programas educativos, en investigación, en la creación de nuevas líneas para el servicio social de los estudiantes. Ella ha admirado la corriente aristotélica desde Edad Mosa y su frase favorita dicha por Aristóteles es La excelencia nunca sucede por accidente. Siempre es el resultado de una profunda intención. Esfuerzo sincero, ejecución inteligente, Representa la opción sabia de muchas alternativas. La selección y no la suerte determinará tu destino. Es un gusto recibirla con la presentación de su conferencia Achieving the Greatness of Wisdom and Virtue Through the Nicomachean Ethics of Aristotle in Our Era. Adelante, por favor. Gracias. ¿Puede compartir la presentación, por favor? Siguiente. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, our today's conference is under the name Achieving the Greatness of Wisdom and Virtue Through the Nicomachean Ethics of Aristotle in our era. And I'm Professor Brenda Mesa, and I'm so happy to present this topic because this takes us to the ancient times and to one of the greatest um, philosophers that ever existed, which is Aristotle. And next. Thank you. So, uh, no, previous, yes. And um, so this is another famous saying of Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And um, as we talked about before, um, we'll be talking about the wisdom and virtue through the Nicomachean ethics of Aristotle in our era. So we'll be talking about ethics, the word ethics, uh, the definition of ethics, uh, it means moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. And also um, this word uh, has a meaning, which means habit, the word ethics, means habit, which is important to our conference. Also, another important part is that um, this name was given um, to the book that Aristotle uh, wrote, Nicomachean, because he was edited by his son. So, and He believes that in order to have good habits, you need to repeat every day the same thing so you can become excellent in what you do. So pretty much the modern saying is practice makes perfect. So this is what he thought, you know, so if you every day practice the same thing, you will be able to
of his writing. Um, he wrote 10 books and seven of those books are Eudemian Ethics, the Magna Moralia and the Nicomachean Ethics. So in total, you have 10 books said he was able to provide some uh, resources and to provide also um, some books about his research he did. And then about Aristotle's life, uh, well, he was born on 334 BC in Estagira, uh, Chalcides, um, he died in 322 BC at uh, 62. So he was still young when he died. Um, Macedonian Empire. Education, well, he, um, he studied with Plato. He was a famous philosopher. And also Aristotle go, uh, won the name for the philosopher. So he won this name, the philosopher, because he really was a philosopher. He wrote lots of books and he had lots of students. And he also married um, a famous person, uh, Pythias, the elder. She was a biologist and embryologist. Um, his daughter was Pythias, the younger, and um, his son, um, as we mentioned before, uh, Nicomachi. Ira, uh, ancient Greek philosophy, region, Western philosophy school. Um, so he promoted the peripatetic school. I'll talk about it later. Aristotelianism, classical republicanism, and of course about ethics. Uh, about the peripatetic school, which also was promoted by Plato. It's about walking and talking, you know, walking and talking. So during his classes, he used to walk around and talk about things, but it involves something else. He tried to teach students that they should go and do, you know? So it's not just about staying in one place. It's about moving around, doing research, um, putting together things and um, other um, teachings that he promoted also was the classical republicanism, which was about doing things that are going to help most of the population. So under this regime, he believed that most people should get benefited by the decisions of the government. So supported the common good. And then also he had three famous pupils, which were Alexander the Great, Theophrastus, and Aristogenus. That's the, the way it is pronounced, Aristogenus. And Alexander the Great, well, um, you pretty much know about him. Um, he was the man that never lost a battle and that is spread the Greek culture strategically. So he traveled to many places. And although um, it is said that many got killed, also many got saved by him, you know, because he also um, had other kind of strategy. So, um, so some of the people got converted into his culture and that's how they survived. And then he was a royal lineage. He was the son of the King of Macedon, Alexander the Great, that was the pupil of, um, Ale of um, Aristotle. And okay, um, about Alexander the Great, uh, he was uh, the son of the King of Macedon and Olympia, uh, daughter of King Neoptolemus I, 
It is said that Alexander obtained a collection of plants for Aristotle to study botanics that he found during his journeys. So he contributed also to the research of Aristotle. And um, so he pretty much liked Alexander the Great a lot. And, um, and also he taught Theophrastus who later was called the father of botany because he classified trees, shrubs, and herbs, also famous for his contribution in grammar, logic, history, physics, and metaphysics. So Theophrastus, he was the follower of um, Aristotle, and also he became a teacher after Aristotle. He became the one, you know, to follow um, Aristotle's uh, teachings. So he was left with the classes and all of it, you know, uh, the same place where he used to teach because he was into studying the same things, you know, and he contributed greatly to um, the writing of so many books as well. And Aristogenus, famous for formulating his theory on vibration and harmonics in the classical world, he was also a Greek peripatetic philosopher. So he liked um, traveling around, uh, discovering things, and he contributed greatly to music. So he was also a follower of Aristotle. And um, the main interest of Aristotle um, were biology, zoology, um, psychology. He, for example, in zoology, he tried to discover how, um, you know, animals were born and he opened like, for example, the eggs of several birds to see uh, how they look inside. So he was into studying the development of um, the species. So he pretty much studied lots of animals, biology um, as well psychology, physics, metaphysics, logic, ethics, rhetoric, aesthetics, music, poetry, economics, politics, government, meteorology, and geology. So he studied those things, but he also contributed with his writings. So he was um, a researcher, a deep researcher, and he wrote all his discoveries in books. So other people will follow, you know, the, the research. So he left those writings so other people could continue their research. So he was aware that he wasn't able to cover everything in his time. So he left these books to the people that were like him, researchers, so they could continue their research and discover other things. So, for example, about logic, he also worked with writing things about logic uh, that nowadays we use in some math classes. Um, ethics, of course, about habits and aesthetics. He loved beautiful things, so he wrote us about aesthetics. Music, poetry, economics, he was into economy as well. And remember that he pretty much thought about the classical republicanism uh, to provide most of the people with what they needed. So he believed in feeding, um, you know, all the people and um, also providing for all the people because they needed things, you know, he was aware of that. So that's why he promoted this kind of thinking. And geology, studying the earth and the stones, meteorology as well. And um, so he created this Aristotelian philosophy and he had so many followers. Syllogism, that is deductive reasoning and the theory of the soul and virtue ethics. I'll show you later about this uh, syllogism, which is deductive reasoning. And this is so important to humanity because nowadays uh, lots of research, you know, um, is based upon this thinking, you know, syllogism, deductive reasoning. So um, he said about art, 
For example, about this science, he said that the aim of art is to represent not the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance. So he was a deep thinker. So when he saw uh, a painting, he studied the whole painting, you know, and what the painter was trying to convey to people or to portray um, in that painting. So he was a deep thinker and for him, art was not just superficial, it was quite deep, you know, art, it was so special. And also um, about sciences, he mentioned um, if they do what is in accordance with the laws of grammar and of music, they are grammarians and musicians. So pretty much he said, if you follow the rules, if you keep trying and trying, you know, and you do, um, things according to what was written before. I mean, and you keep working on it and then you'll become a grammarian. If you work with grammar and if you apply the grammar, the correct grammar, then you, you'll be a grammarian. If you play music, if you follow the, the rules of the music and then you will be a musician. So the same with the other sciences, you know, with math, with biology, botanics, whatever, um, if, you, um, if you keep applying the rules, if you keep studying the science, then you will become, you know, um, one of them. That's what he thought. So pretty much he believed that virtue and ethics belong to many parts of our lives. Like for example, if we uh, want to um, be good people, that we need to be good people every day. But also he believed that ethics um, also apply to other areas like science, habits. So if you want to become um, a person that is good in the area of biology, you need to apply yourself every day. So you need to do some research every day and think about it every day and follow what is already written. So he pretty much believed in following, you know, uh, the predecessors. Um, he followed Plato, Plato followed uh, another person and so on because they were, um, they were like people that continued uh, these studies. So to a certain point, they, they were one person, you know, um, doing the same thing, following the same trend to be able to discover more things for humanity. So they pretty much believe in sharing knowledge. They didn't keep this knowledge to themselves. They pretty much thought about sharing knowledge to other people so they can, they can continue what they started. In this case, studying those sciences and other people that were interested in the same sciences um, that's why um, they wrote this book. So everyone interested in keep studying these sciences and growing in these sciences, they could read the books and follow, you know, and continue what they left. So they believe that, um, you know, after their, um, their deaths, it wouldn't be over, you know, they thought that it will continue and continue and continue with humankind. And then um, Aristotle uh, also said that excellent is, excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, no chance, determines your destiny. So uh, never leave things to chance. You have to keep working on the things that you love. You have to keep working on the things that you like. So uh, pretty much he thought that you should, um, you know, have a habit um, and um, continue what you like doing, but you need to practice it every single day. Every day you need to keep practicing that's how you get excellence. You know, excellence doesn't come by chance. 
it comes by doing, practicing, 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 and you'll be able to, to become great in that branch of knowledge. That's what he thought. And then I have this, um, this part of what he wrote, and he also wrote about Olympic Games. And he said this, our account of happiness is in harmony with those who say that happiness is virtue or some particular virtue, since activity in accordance with virtue is characteristic of virtue. Presumably, um, through it makes a great difference whether we conceive of the chief good as consistent in possession or in use. That is to say, in a state or in activity, for while a state can exist without producing any good consequences, as it does in the case of a person sleeping or lying idle for some other reason. This is impossible for inactivity. It will necessarily engage in action and do so well, as in the Olympic Games. It is not the most attractive and the strongest who are crowned, but those who compete, since it is from this group that winners come. So in life, it is those who are rightly, who will attain what is noble and good. So that's what he thought about the Olympic Games and about everything in life. So he says, um, it's not about the most attractive, it's not about the strongest, it's about those people that are noble and good and that keep working every day. For example, a person that wants to compete in the Olympic Games has to train every single day. So if I'm a runner, I have to run every day, every day, every day, so I can be able to compete in those games. So I won't win the game um, because I'm cute. I won't win it because I'm strong or because I think that I'm intelligent. I will win it because I keep working every single day, every single day, practice, 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 practice. And that's how it comes, um, you know, that these, these people win these Olympic games because they practice every single day. So doesn't matter what you choose to do in life, you pretty much need to practice every day because practice makes perfect. And also excellence comes through um, practicing um, every single day. Excellence only comes by practicing, never comes by chance. And it happened the same um, to these Olympic gamers that they had to practice every single day. And you know about these Olympic games, they are Asian games. So during his time, those Olympic games already existed. So that's how he came to write this, this section. Um, so this is in one of the books that he wrote from these 10 books that I'm talking about. I'm going to read another section from, uh, from another book that he wrote. This is book number two. And then he says, virtue then being of two kinds, intellectual and moral, intellectual virtue in the main oaths both is birth and is growth to teaching for which reason it requires experience and time, while moral virtue comes about as a result of habit, whence also is named ethic, is one that is formed by a slight variation from the word ethos, habit. From this, it is also plain that none of the moral virtues arises in us by nature, for nothing that exists by nature can form a habit contrary to its nature. For instance, the stone which by nature moves downwards cannot be habituated to move upwards, not even if one tries to train it by throwing it up 10,000 times, nor can fire be habituated to move downwards, nor can anything else that by nature behaves in one way be trained to behave in another, neither by nature then not contrary to nature, 
do the virtues arise in us? Rather, we are adapted by nature to receive them and are perfect by habit. So he also believed in physics. So you cannot uh, make, uh, for example, a stone um, go, go to the sky, you know, if you throw a stone, it will go to the ground because of physics. So he also believed in physics. So he said that are things by nature that they wouldn't be trained to do otherwise. But human, human beings, he believed that they can be trained um, in the things that they like doing, you know? So human beings are different to other things in the world that they have a different direction because of physics, right? So he also talked about uh, physics a lot in his writings. And then he says later on, he says in this book, number two, again, it is from the same causes and by the same means that every virtue is both produced and destroyed. And similarly, every art, for it is from playing the liar that both good and bad liar players are produced. And the corresponding statement is true of builders and of all the rest. Men will be good or bad builders as a result of building well or badly. For if these were not so, there would have been no need of a teacher, but all men would have been born good or bad at their craft. This then is the case with the virtues also. By doing the acts that we do in our transactions, with other men, we become just or unjust. And by doing the acts that we do in the presence of danger and being habituated to feel fear or confidence, we become brave or cowardly. The same is true of appetites and feelings of anger. Some men become temperate and good tempered. Others self-indulgent and irascible by behaving in one way or the other in the appropriate circumstances. Thus, in one world, uh, states of character arise out of like activities. This is why the activities we exhibit must be of a certain kind. It is because the states of character correspond to the differences between these. It makes no small difference then whether we form habits of one kind or of another from our very youth. It makes a very great difference, or rather, all the difference. So um, these words are so true, right? And then he also says, since then the present inquiry does not aim at theor theoretical knowledge like the others. For we are inquiring, not in order to know what virtue is, but in order to become good, since otherwise our inquiry would have been of no use, we must examine the nature of actions, namely how we ought to do them. For this determine also the nature of the states of character that are produced, as we have said now, that we must act according to the right rule is a common principle and must be assumed it will be discussed later both what the right rule is and how it is related to the other virtues. But this must be agreed upon the forehand that the whole account of matters of conduct must be given in outline and not precisely. As we said at the very beginning that the accounts with the man must be in accordance with the subject matter. Matters concerned with conduct and questions or what is good for us have no fixity. Any more than matters of health, the general account being of this nature, the account of particular cases is yet more lacking in exactness, for they do not fall under any art or precept, but the agents themselves must in each case consider what is appropriate to the occasion as happens also in the art of medicine or of navigation. So, um, well, this is um, also 
um, in accordance to what we were saying um, previously. And then um, in the other slide, um, there is an explanation about this saying that I mentioned before about how Aristotle believed that if people made the right decisions, then the consequence of their acts will bring them a happy and productive life, especially for contributing to increment knowledge in sciences. So he is about have habits of everything, you know, about the good things, about your life, politics. And um, this is what he said about politics. He said, uh, classical republicanism, he was a promoter of this, so on politics. Four legislators made the citizens good by forming habits in them. And this is the wish of every legislator and those who do not affect it miss their mark. And it is in this that a good constitution differs from a bad one. So while well, he's saying that legislators, the ones that set the law, should make citizens good by habits. So if they want to, if they want them to be good, they need to um, make them do things every day. For example, traffic lights, um, other things that have to do with um, arriving on time at work. That's part of the habits. Uh, going on time to school, um, be nice to each other. Um, this is um, about showing respect. Otherwise, uh, you know, people can get in trouble if they are not nice to each other because then the law may punish them. So we need to create habits. People will behave um, good if they have a habit, you know, of doing this. If they don't have a habit of controlling themselves, which he believes is the greatest thing that you can ever do, you know, to be able to control your own person rather than the rest of the population to control your own person, he thinks is a good thing and that's the greatest thing that you can ever do. So if everyone um, could do this, control himself or herself, then our population will be, um, you know, much better and all the citizens will be able to live in peace and uh, with these habits, they could create a better place to live. That's what he thinks and what he promotes in his writings. So Aristotle proposes practicing good habits, excellence and virtue are only reached by doing then sciences are ruled by those that practice them, master them, and contribute with knowledge as well. So pretty much in few words, if you go to church, you listen to the good things. But if you practice, then you'll be doing, you know, the good things, not just listening to what is good. Sometimes we also read good books, but we don't practice them. Like right now, we are reading about Aristotle. He is uh, writing about habits, about doing good things in our lives. And if we listen, if we read about him, but we don't do, then um, nothing good will happen out of it. So we need to listen, we need to read, we need to absorb the information, meditate, he was a meditator, a great meditator. He would meditate over every single thing. So he was a great meditator and that helped him to become a greater person than he was when he was born. Um, so he tried every day. That's what he is teaching. He tried every day, every day, every day. So it's not something that you have by nature when you are born, you have to work it out every day. So it uh, requires an effort. Like he said, if nobody's perfect, you have to try every day. Like if you make a mistake, you have to try again, try again, try again, and try again until you are able to reach greatness, right? And then, um, the, then sciences are ruled by those that practice them, master them, and contribute with knowledge as well. And um, also about what I mentioned before about um, 
Another trend that he imposed was syllogism, deductive reasoning. So it helped uh, sciences uh, nowadays um, that are based upon this um, reasoning, which is syllogism, deductive reasoning. So you have a premise, you have premise one, premise two, and then from those premises, it comes a conclusion. So I wrote, I wrote an example here, it's not what he said, but he wrote about several examples. So pretty much I used syllogism and I was able to write this. Premise one, all Aristotelian philosophers believe in virtue and ethics, and then premise two, Alexander the Great, Theophrastus, and Aristogenus were Aristotelian philosophers. Then, deductive reasoning, therefore, Alexander the Great, Theophrastus, and Aristogenus believe in virtue and ethics, yes, because they were Aristotelian philosophers. So one thing, um, and the second thing they, takes you to another level, you know, to the deductive reasoning. So this is pretty simple, but um, he mentioned an example about dogs, right? Like dogs uh, have four legs, and then um, this is one of the premises that he, that he wrote. Um, and yeah, it just, yeah, he wrote about dogs, and then he deducted that that uh, finally he detected that all, all uh, dogs had four legs because they were mammals and then all mammals have um, four legs. So, well, um, I can't recall all the example guys, sorry about it, uh, but um, he wrote about dogs. That's why I decided to use another example, not about the dog thing. Um, okay, and um, also, well, this is the conclusion, guys. Um, do, practice, and contribute. Do, practice, and contribute. And I wasn't thinking about bringing this example up, but I wanted to uh, let you know that he has an example about this in his writings. Uh, actually, he has several examples because he wrote a lot about this, but I came across this example of the dogs and... Um, like right now I can remember the premises, like exactly the, the premises that he wrote about, but finally he came to this conclusion that all the dogs have for legs, something like that. And um, so this is the bibliography guys. And you can go through the books that he wrote, which are actually 10 books. And I don't know, guys, if you have any questions about the presentation. Sorry that I forgot about the premises of the talks, but um, I wasn't going to present uh, that part. Okay, do you have any questions that you would like to ask? No questions? No, maestra, no, no nos ha llegado nada. Okay, so we just finished. So we just finished. Is because they had the other link. They, uh, I gave them the other link. So they were joining by the other link. I don't know what happened. So. Okay, so let's finish the, let's finish the. Maestra, este, si hay una, hay una pregunta, dice, eh, ¿cree que la presencia histórica o sea viable en una época donde la factibilidad de las personas impera por mucho antes que las acciones concienzadas? Ok, um, yes, so we live in another época, that's true, it is true, we live in another época, um, so sometimes, um, Virtue and ethics is not the first thing to follow. We're living in another epoch in which we believe that freedom is the most important thing ever. So it is hard to uh, think about, um, you know, fulfilling certain things in, in our 
in our lives when some things that are contrary to those um, to those things that we want to pursue uh, are in our way. But I think that um, we can try hard, you know, to to be able to get where we want. And now there is no such thing as perfection, so we need to keep trying. And also we need to. Um, we need to think about exactly what we want in our lives because every person wants something different. So nobody wants the same thing. Nobody wants the same thing. So if I'm good um, with certain things, I should uh, try to perfection it, you know, my, my person into those things that I'm good at. So trying, for example, for me, that I'm not that good at flying planes because um, I don't like traveling by plane. So uh, for me, it would be, uh, it would be quite um, hard, you know, uh, to learn this, this branch, you know, um, of uh, knowledge, you know, for me, it would be so hard to learn how to fly a plane because I'm not into it. I'm scared of planes. So, it wouldn't be for me. So I need to apply into the things that I'm good at, yes? So, I mean, if I'm trying to read something that I'm not good at, then habit uh, wouldn't help me because then I'm not good at something. So I can try to be much better in certain things, but uh, probably I wouldn't be great if I apply myself into things that I'm not that good at. For example, uh, there are other things like biology. If I'm not good at biology, I can learn some biology, but probably I wouldn't reach the greatness of the scientists that are into biology. So I need to apply into the things that I'm good at, into the things that I like, into the things that I love. So there is no such thing as this is the right branch to follow. You should go into this path. You need to follow your instincts and what you like and what you love and what you are good at. So apply yourself into that, into that science or into that branch of knowledge so you can be great. That's my best advice. Uh, I mean, according following uh, Aristotle's thoughts. Any other question? Sí, hay, hay otra de Iván Pérez. Dice... What are the premises of the other books? Okay, um, can you can you say it again? Because it got distorted the voice. What are the premises of the other books? Okay, uh, the premises of the other books. Um, pretty much of these ten books is about the same thing, you know, virtue, ethics, and all of it about giving you advice about how to be in life, about uh, politics, how they should behave in government, and about, in general, you know, how we should reach our um, goals in life. About other books that he wrote, because, because he wrote hundreds of books, they are about other branches like biology, math, but these books pretty much um, are uh, like a summary these books are a summary of um, the way that he thinks, you know, in general about things. But um, he speaks as um, in general terms of sciences, politics, and other things in these books, in these 10 books. He speaks about those things, but applying it to ethics, okay? So he wrote many other books, and those books are so deep into the, into the sciences uh specifically like this book is for, for biology so you can find things about plants about uh human beings in the books that he wrote but about these books is about ethics ethics and virtue these 10 books that i'm talking about today these are about virtue and ethics and about habits because nothing comes um by itself that what he says in these 10 books you need to apply yourself Keep trying, keep trying, but keep trying in the things that you are good at. If you keep trying in the things that you're not good at, probably it would be hard to reach those things, you know? Like a stone that is thrown to the, to the air and you want it to go 
to the sky, but it falls to the to the earth. That's because it is is nature. So if we have um, a tendency towards certain sciences, so the best advice is to apply into those sciences. Um, we can study other sciences a bit of it to know about those things, like to know about music, to know about painting. But probably we are not good at music, so. Go to the things that you're good at, learn about things that others are studying to be able to know about, um, you know, what is going on, but you should apply yourself into the thing that you're good at. This is about the 10 books that he wrote about ethics and virtue. There are so many books that he wrote specifically about every of the topics, but in this book, in these books, he talks about virtue and ethics and he pretty much uh, mentions his other books. So he makes reference to the other books that he wrote about a little bit about math, a little bit about logic, a little bit about politics, but uh, centered always on ethics and virtue in these 10 books that he wrote. You can find these 10 books, you can find them online. Um, if you type um, book number one, um, Aristotle's, um, and then on uh, ethics and virtue, you can find book number one, book number two, book number three, and uh, book number 10. There are 10 books that you can find and that you can read. And of course, guys, these books are translations. Most of the books that are uh, translated from um, these, um, these languages that are ancient Greek, um, you can uh, find them, you know, in Oxford and Cambridge. These are uh, the, the best translations. Well, some of the best translations that I've seen, but there are, so, there are also other translations from other people, other good translators. But these uh, translations come from these, um, from these sources. Bueno, pues muchísimas gracias, maestra. Este, a continuación le voy a leer su constancia. Y la Universidad Autónoma de Chihuahua y la Facultad de Filosofía y Letras otorga la presente constancia a maestro Brenda Dil Mesa González por su valioso participación como conferencista de la cuadragésima tercera semana, semana de humanismo, ética y educación como herramienta contra la brecha social. Con su conferencia Achieving the Greatness and Wisdom of Virtue Through the Nicomachean Ethics of Aristotle in Our Air. Lo va a poder virtual el miércoles 6 de octubre del 2021 de 9 a 10 de la mañana. Muchísimas gracias, maestra. Muchísimas gracias a ustedes por permitirme. Y pues es así como finalizamos este, este espacio. Es así como finalizamos este espacio en la cuadragésima tercera semana del humanismo. Pues para nuestros estudiantes y docentes, les recordamos seguir pendientes de las actividades del día dentro de la programación. Continuaremos con más participación por parte de la Academia de Lengua Inglesa. Eh, la Mesa de Literatura Fantástica Mexicana, Vertientes y Posibilidades de Análisis, la presentación del libro Miradas de Género desde el Norte, tomos 1 y 2, la Mesa Panel Simeon Whale en perspectiva a cargo de la Academia de Filosofía, la conferencia Consideraciones Éticas sobre la Desigualdad desde la Perspectiva del Cuerpo, concluyendo el día con la conferencia magistral a cargo del doctor Luis Alejandro Martínez Canales. Muchas gracias. Gracias.